Come have a seat in the Scald Circle and hear the tale of Bacchus and Philemon, as told by Menogen. Before we begin our tale, did you know that we release new stories for free every week on Wednesdays? Be certain to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Spotify, Podbean, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. That way, you'll never miss out when we release free bonus stories other days of the week. Never forget, visit thescaldcircle.com to stay up to date with all of our current happenings, and to also visit our story archive, sorted by origin and region. Now then, this begins the tale of Bacchus and Philemon. In the hill country, there were once two trees which all the peasants near and far pointed out as a great marvel. And no wonder, for one was an oak and the other a linden. Yet they grew from a single trunk. The story of how this came about is proof of the immeasurable power of the gods, and also of the way they reward the humble and the pious. Sometimes when Zeus was tired of eating ambrosia and drinking nectar up in Olympus, and even a little weary of listening to Apollo's lyre and watching the graces dance, he would come down to earth, disguise himself as a mortal, and go looking for adventures. His favorite companion on these tours was Hermes, the most entertaining of all the gods, the shrewdest and most resourceful. On this particular trip, Zeus had determined to find out how hospitable the people of the land were. Hospitality was... Of course, very important to him, since all guests, all who seek shelter in a strange land, were under his special protection. The two gods, accordingly, took on the appearance of poor wayfarers and wandered through the land, locking at each lowly hut or great house they came to and asking for food and a place to rest in. Not one person would admit them. Every time they were dismissed insolently and the door barred against them. They made trial of hundreds, all treated them in the same way. At last, they came upon a little hovel of the humblest sort, poorer than any they had found yet, with a roof made only of reeds. But here, when they knocked, the door was opened wide and a cheerful voice bade them enter. They had to stoop to pass through the low entrance, but once inside, they found themselves in a snug and very clean room where a kindly-faced old man and woman welcomed them, in the friendliest fashion, and bustled about to make them comfortable. The old man set a bench near the fire, and told them to stretch out on it and rest their tired limbs, and the old woman threw a covering over it. Her name was Bacchus, she told the strangers, and her husband was called Philemon. They had lived in that cottage all their married life, and had always been happy. We are poor folk, she said. But poverty isn't so bad when you're willing to own up to it. And a contented spirit is a great help, too. All the while she was talking, she was busy doing things for them. The coals under the ashes on the dark hearth she fanned to life, until a cheerful fire was burning. Over this, she hung a little kettle full of water. And just as it began to boil, her husband came in with a fine cabbage he had got from the garden. Into the kettle it went with a piece of the pork which was hanged from one of the beams. While this cooked, Bacchus sat the table with her trembling old hands. One table leg was too short, but she propped it up with a bit of broken dish. On the board, she placed olives and radishes and several eggs which she had roasted in the ashes. By this time, the cabbage and bacon were done, and the old man pushed two rickety couches up to the table and bade his guests to recline and eat. Presently, he brought them cups of beechwood and an earthenware mixing bowl, which held some wine, very like vinegar, plentifully diluted with water. Philemon, however, was clearly proud and happy at being able to add such cheer to the supper, and he kept on the watch to refill each cup as soon as it had been emptied. The two old folks were so pleased and excited by the success of their hospitality that only very slowly a strange thing dawned on them. The mixing bowl kept full, No matter how many cups were poured out from it, the level of the wine stayed the same, up to the brim. As they saw this wonder, each looked in tenor at the other, and dropping their eyes they prayed silently. Then, with voices trembling all over, they begged their guests to pardon the poor refreshments they had offered. We have a goose, the old man said, which we ought to have given you lordships. 
But if you will only wait, it shall be done at once. To catch the goose, however, proved beyond their powers. They tried in vain until they were worn out, while Zeus and Hermes watched them greatly entertained. When both Philemon and Bacchus had had to give up the chase, panting and exhausted, the gods felt that the time had come for them to take action. They were really very kind. You have been host to gods, they said, and you shall have your reward. This wicked country which despises the poor stranger will be bitterly punished, but not you. Then they escorted the two out of the hut and told them to look around them. To their amazement, all they saw was water. The whole countryside had disappeared. A great lake surrounded them. Their neighbors had not been good to the old couple. Nevertheless, standing there, they wept for them. But all of a sudden, their tears were dried by an overwhelming wonder. Before their eyes, the tiny, lowly hut which had been their home for so long was turned into a stately, pillared temple of whitest marble with a golden roof. Good people, Zeus said. Ask whatever you want, and you shall have your wish. The old people exchanged a hurried whisper. Then Philemon spoke. Let us be your priests guarding this temple for you. And, um, oh, since we have lived so long together, let neither of us ever have to live alone. Grant that we may die together. The gods assented, well pleased with the two. A long time they served in their grand building, and the story does not say whether they ever missed their cozy little room with its cheerful hearth. But one day, standing before the marble and golden magnificence, they fell to talking about their former life, which had been so hard and yet so happy. By now, both were in extreme old age. Suddenly, as they exchanged memories, each saw the other putting forth leaves. Then Bach was growing around them. They had time only to cry, Farewell, dear companion. As the words passed their lips, they became trees. But still they were together. The linden and the oak grew from one trunk. From far and wide people came to admire the wonder. And always wreaths of flowers hung on the branches in honor of the pious and the faithful pair. And that is the tale of Bacchus and Philemon. Thank you for listening to our story. If you enjoyed it, please take a look at our Patreon page to learn how you can earn great rewards while also supporting us. We appreciate even the smallest of contributions, as they allow us to continue to release new stories every week for free on Wednesdays, and also provide you with bonus stories for your listening pleasure. Visit thescaldcircle.com to view our story archive, sorted by origin and region, and to stay up to date with all of our current developments. Once again, thank you for listening to our story.